hello, hello, and welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much for being here. And share, please share. I would appreciate it if you did that, if you find this useful. Today, I want to talk about what happens if you have some sort of inheritance money or if you are using money from a retirement account that you had, you know, previously, you previously worked and you had a retirement account and you have all this money sitting there and you're going to use it to start a business. You're going to use it to buy property. You're going to use it to do something. What do we do with that money? I have a lot of conversations about this, that people are using that money to start a business. They are using that money to buy something that is a cash flowing asset. Okay. They're not or they're actually using it to pay off debt. In some situations, that is the case as well. And so it doesn't matter ultimately what that is for, but I'm going to challenge you today to think about that money as a loan. So let's just say that you got an inheritance of $300,000, and that money was used to buy a rental property. And you decided that this rental property, this is such a good idea to buy this rental property because it is going to be a cash flowing asset. But you did not figure in that you have to pay yourself back for that $300,000. This is where the mistake happens. People think, oh, I have this retirement account that has $300,000 in it. I've worked for, you know, 25 years. I'm going to use that money and I'm going to buy a rental property. And the rental property looks like it's going to cash flow, but it only looks like that because there's not a loan payment to the bank. And so when you actually sit down and figure, oh, well, now I have to pay myself back. If I would have had to go to the bank, they would have done a 20-year, 25, 30-year mortgage at maybe, you know, 6, 7%. And now I have that payment. Well, now if I have that payment to the bank, there's not enough cash flow in this business opportunity to do it. So I'm not going to buy this property because it's not going to cash flow. Or we are going to start a business and we think, okay, everything we need for the business, maybe we need to buy equipment, maybe we need to, you know, do some advertising, whatever. We think that, okay, we're going to make, we're going to be able to cash flow this business because we don't have a loan payment to the Small Business Association, or we don't have a loan payment to the bank for a business startup. But you do. You used money that was inheritance money. It was given to you, or it was money you saved for retirement. And you had segregated that money. It was not money that we had just, we weren't using. It was money that was just sitting there. And so, You have to look at the fact that whatever you're doing, if you are going to take this business opportunity, will it cash flow if you had to go get a loan for it? A lot of people will not start businesses or buy anything until they have enough money to pay for it in full because then they think, well, this is great. Now it's cash flowing and this was a great opportunity. No. Because if you are paying cash for things, you are probably not being honest to pay that back. And then it's not a good business opportunity. If you couldn't start that business before you had the inheritance or you started using 401k or retirement money, if you couldn't do it then, what makes you think that it's going to work now? That is a false accounting. And that's what I call it, false accounting. Because we're We're literally giving up money. If it doesn't make enough to pay us back, how are we, what, we have the house with equity in it and now we need to sell it? So we we would have had to do it either way, right? Or let's say that we have some inheritance and we paid off credit card debt. Well, now if we've paid off all of these debts, What is happening if we paid off a vehicle loan? What's happening to the vehicle payment? If we paid off credit cards, what's happening with the credit card payment? Again, this is where people get in trouble is because they're like, oh, great. Now we have an extra $500 or $800 a month and we're just going to go spend it and we're not going to be accountable for it. No, if we paid off the credit card and we paid off the pickup, 
we continue to use that money and make a payment into our savings account if that's the case. And some people might say, well, in today's economy, Mary Jo, that's impossible. We can't save any money. No, it's not. Because you were doing it before, right? When you had the pickup payment, you were making the pickup payment and you were still doing all the other stuff. If we look at what Nelson talks about in his book, in the Becoming Your Own Banker book, and he talks about Parkinson's Law, our needs rise to meet our income. We don't ever beat Parkinson's Law. If we get a raise, we spend it. We don't even know where it went, but we spent it. We don't actually say, okay, this much was my raise and I'm going to put it over here and maybe I'm going to build my savings account with it. Maybe I'm going to start my infinite banking policy with it, whatever that might be. And so we have to be smart about what we're doing with that money and we have to be honest and treat it as such. So a lot of times you will get people that will say, well, I'm not going to leave anybody any inheritance because they're just going to piss it down their leg, right? That's what the old timers always said. And so I'm not leaving them anything. You don't have to leave them anything, but the reason they're saying that is because when people get inheritance or when people come across a chunk of money, they don't pay themselves back and they actually do, you know what, piss it down their leg. They're actually not, they don't have anything to show for it at the end of the day. Because let's just say that you bought your house with it and you never paid it back and you never made a house payment. Are you putting money, like are you repairing that house? Are you putting more money into it? Or did you buy it and you just let it go? And so now you don't even have a decent amount of equity in that house because it's not even worth as much as it could have been. So think about that. I don't care what you use that for because a lot of people don't want to use it because they're terrified that if I use my retirement money, it's never going to be there for retirement. This is the whole broken thought process around 401ks and IRAs is that it's an or asset. We have to put it in the 401k and we can't do anything else with it, right? It's a 401k or it's starting a business. So we put it in the 401k, but then it's just sitting there. We can use the 401k money. We can start the business and we'll pay it back. And then we have the money for retirement still. Nobody wants to use their retirement money to do any of that stuff because that's retirement. Well, the retirement money will be there. You just pay it back. That is a really hard concept for some people to get. I've had meetings where I've talked about that and there is a spouse that's like, no, no. Well, then your books aren't correct. If you can't make the payment, then your books aren't correct. You're not running that business with the correct profit margin. Don't be scared to use the inheritance. Don't be scared to use the retirement account. Just pay it back. I probably wouldn't suggest using it if you're not going to pay it back and you're not going to be honest about it. Now you just gave money, right? If you can use that amount and you can pay it back, to reuse it again, now what? You're doing infinite banking. You're turning money exactly like the banks are. But the banks don't say, oh, look, Mary Jo just deposited $100,000 in the bank. I'm going to lend it to you, Susie, and you don't ever have to pay that back. That's okay. Because Susie will make enough money that, you know, it, we're good. We're good. We don't ever have to pay you back, Mary Jo. No, no, no. That may have not been the best example, but no. So hope that helps just get you to think correctly about what happens when we come into a lump sum of money. And some people come into a lump sum of money and they are so scared to use it that they just don't because they're so scared to lose it. You don't ever have to worry about losing it as long as you pay it back. All right, guys, let me know. Comments, questions, concerns, maryjo at withoutthebank.com. You can go to the MJ hotline and you can leave me a message there. If you have not gotten the books, go to withoutthebank.com, get my book, get Nelson's book and schedule your appointment. I am booking out till March, but so get on the calendar, get your book, get on the calendar. And then all I require is that you read the book prior to us meeting. And then we can figure out 
how this is going to help you, what this looks like for you, all that good stuff. So let me know how I can be of assistance and you have a fantastic rest of your day.